So, um, as you're saying, the mass on the left is 8.0. What do you say? 0.04. No, on the left. No, 0.0423. And the mass on the right is 8.04. So, there's a difference. 0 0.0 0 0.019 AMU. And by the way, AMU, I'll get you the value later, but it's just roughly equal the mass of a proton. Roughly, okay? It's not exactly that. But it's a very small mass. It makes these calculations more manageable to do. Do you hear about AMU in chemistry? No? Okay. Anyway, um, it's 0 0.019 atomic mass units, AMU. So there's a small difference. So what's going on? Any ideas? Why did some of the mass cease to be... Yeah, there was some conversion going on. So some of the mass was converted into something which is not mass. Uh, mass does not disappear. Or, wait, can it? Can it? <laughs> um, it can't disappear, but it can convert. So the thing that we're missing here to balance it is uh, yeah well it's not mass actually you think maybe some some mass left it but it's actually well I'll get to it later but there's something missing here anyway to balance this uh, so this actually is an experiment done by Walton about a hundred years ago uh, and he did not decide to do this experiment one day he didn't just wake up one morning and said I'll fire some hydrogen at some lithium and see what I get. Uh, what he was trying to do was prove a formula Einstein had and Einstein only proved this formula mathematically. He didn't do it with an experiment. That's what Walton was trying to do. Uh, so Einstein's formula that Walton was trying to verify uh, Einstein predicted that when atoms combine in a nuclear reaction with some of the initial mass appearing to be lost it was not lost, but rather converted into energy. So this is what you were saying, Tekken. You know, you don't need to write this down, because you've got the idea. That some of the missing mass was converted into energy. And Einstein actually had a formula for how much energy you should have when the mass was converted into energy. So this is the famous E equals mc squared formula. Or more commonly written, E equals mc squared. So this tells you how much energy you should have from the converted mass. Yes? Yes? Hey, where are you so late? Ah, uh, no, come back to the second class now. Yes? For what? What do you think? Yes. What do you think the unit for M is? M? Sure. Yeah, and C? Energy. No. Uh, C? What is C? Do you remember what C is, don't you? Speed of, Speed of light. So what's the unit for that? Uh, energy. No, the unit. Uh, yes. Okay, you got this formula? Yes? Yes? Okay. So, um, good job, Einstein. He has a formula now that tells us how much energy you should have from the missing mass. So, find energy in joules. Okay, so let's actually do it for this problem. Right, so, we have 0 0.019, yes, uh, atomic mass units, which I said is roughly the mass of a proton. I'll get, you the, uh, I'll get you the exact value later. So if I do mc squared, here I'll write it down. Come on, Pim. Dude. 
There we go. There we have activity. So um, the mass at the beginning uh, we said was 8.023 atomic mass units. The mass at the end is 8.004, wasn't it? Yeah. Atomic mass unit. So the mass that appears to be lost is 0 0.019 atomic mass units. But it wasn't lost, it was converted into energy, which is mc squared, which is 0 0.019 atomic mass units times 3 times 10 to the 8. Now, we have to convert this into kilograms, so if I just uh, do that on my calculator... I'm using atomic mass units into kilograms. Well, one AM unit is the mass of proton about, which is a constant number 1 on your calculator. But I'll write it on the screen for you. Let me just put this down first. 2.86 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. You have it there? One sec. Um. 6 is micro, 9 is nano, what's after 9 is 12 is um, 12 femto? <laughs> I don't remember, we hardly ever get to use it. Is 10 to the minus 12 femto? Mm. Or pico? Uh, pico? Yeah, and femto is smaller than that. Yeah. What's 10 to the minus 12 now? Nano, micro, nano. <laughs> it's not. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh come on. It's Piku. <laughs> yeah. P. Right. So that would be two point eight six Piku joules. Not to be confused with Piku Chu. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'll get you the constant value up here now, KJ, for how big an AMU is. You can write it down. Are you sure I didn't tell you what is the material? Because I can open up the slide now and check. Okay, so if you can see it here, uh, we can use 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. So I'll write that down for you here. 1. AMU is about 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And that's about the mass of a proton or neutron. I think this is given in kilograms. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's about it's about the mass of um, a proton or a neutron. Okay. Got that? Yes? Yes, is that okay? Can I continue? Okay. Right, so we have our answer. It's, uh, it seems like it's quite a small amount. Uh, what's it? 2.86 pico joules, isn't it? But in fact, that's a very large amount for the size of the mass. Because the mass, how big was the mass? It was a 10 to the minus 27 mass. And it made an energy of the size of 10 to the minus 12. Which is like 10 to the 15 times bigger in order. So it actually is a lot of energy for the size of the mass. The mass of a proton is this much. The mass of a neutron is this much. the mass of two protons and two neutrons. So you would think if you had a proton, two protons and two neutrons. Now listen, listen to this before you write down. You listen? If I had like two big footballs and two small golf balls or two footballs and two tennis balls or two footballs, well I guess they're the same size, so two footballs and two basketballs and I stick them together Fine, if I, had, if I had four separate footballs, <laughs> yeah, and I stick the four footballs together, should the mass change? It shouldn't. I mean, you're just sticking them together, right? So, here, the mass of a proton is this much, and the mass of a neutron is this much. So, the mass of two protons and two neutrons together, let's work out what it should be. So, can you type it in? It should be two times 1.007276 plus 2 times 1.008665. So tell me what you get. I want you to type it in as well. Yeah. Now, when you add them up, you get 4.031882. But you don't actually get this. When you actually look at two protons and two neutrons stuck together, you only get 4.002602. So there's a small difference that when you put your two protons and two neutrons together, the mass has decreased slightly. Not much, but you can see that it is less. The difference between 4.03 and 4.002. Now this is what I was trying to tell you about last week, when, um, when you look at um, a proton, uh, its number, it's what, what do you call it? It's um, atomic, atomic number. <coughs> what do you use to calculate for moles and grams? It's 1.007 not actually one uh, and then for the helium it's 4.03 not actually what it should be which is uh, sorry 4.002 not 4.03 in other words when you're more accurate than one decimal place the atomic number and the molar mass it's not the same thing that there can be small differences especially when the atom gets bigger okay Jerry, are you listening? alright, anyway, let's continue um, okay, so 0 0.02928 AMU is missing this is known as the mass defect. So you want to write that vocabulary down. Mass defect is the missing mass when protons and neutrons are bound together. Um, yes, okay, so this is known as the mass defect. Yeah.
Yeah? Okay. Sorry, did you got that second? Yeah? Okay. So, the reason this um, mass is missing, it's not really missing, but some of it was converted into energy. This is the energy used to kind of keep the atom together, to keep it bound together. So this missing mass is not missing, but it was converted into energy, what's called the binding energy. And the binding energy of an atom is the energy required to hold the nucleus together. This energy E can be found from mc squared, where m is the mass defect. That is the apparent loss in mass when the pro protons and neutrons are combined together. This is also the energy required to separate the nucleus. Okay, so you need all of this definition. This is for binding energy and uh, mass defect. Okay, you got that? Yes? Continue? Okay. Sorry, no, second. Give a minute. Yep. Okay. So what is the binding energy in the example I just did? Uh, so I give you all the maths again, but we still have it. No, we don't have it here. Um, okay, so, if you look at the question, you have a proton, a proton, a neutron, and a neutron. So the mass of the proton is 1.007 AMU, so that's 1.007 AMU for this one and for this one. And for a neutron, it's one point. Oh oh, eight six six five, and that's for the neutron and this neutron here. And then when they stick together, what atom is this? Two protons and two neutrons. This one is helium four two, and its mass is four point oh oh two. AMU. So if you look at this, you think it should be the same as two of these plus two of these. So the mass before they're stuck together is two times 1.007 plus 1.008. So the mass before they're stuck together is 4.03. 133. But the mass after they're stuck together is 4.002. Yeah, so there's a little bit of mass that has been lost, called the mass defect. 
So minus 4.002. So this small mass is 0 0.02933. And the reason for this loss is because some of the mass was turned into energy to stick the uh, uh, protons and neutrons together. So this energy you can get as mc squared. What did I say 1 amu was? 1.66 times 10 to the... Yeah, and then we multiply it by c squared. So let's see what we get. Uh, so we get our buddy Piku again. 4.38 Piku joules. Now often electron volts are used instead of joules because electron volts are naturally quite small so uh, if I convert this into electron volts which is a common thing to do in the exam You get 27.3 mega electron volts. It doesn't matter, but you must be comfortable with using both because that's what would happen in the exam. Um, so you need 4.38 picojoules uh, of energy to bind these together, and this energy is taken from the mass. Likewise, if you wanted to separate these, pull them apart, that's how much energy you would need. Which is actually a lot for the size of it. Um, because if you remember, the mass is on the scale of 10 to the minus 27, but the energy is on the scale of 10 to the minus 12. So there's actually a huge difference between the two. A huge difference. Okay. Uh, right, so what is the binded energy per nucleon? So here, how many protons and neutrons do we have? Two and two. So in total nucleons there are four. Okay, so per the energy, um, I'll write it like this with a little bar on the top, the energy per nucleon will be 4.38 divided by 4 picojoules. Now I'll explain why we would care about this now. Okay, so think about this. If you have um, two protons and stick them together, you need some energy to separate them. True. If you have three protons and stick them together, you need more energy because instead of having one um, sticky boundary, when you have the three of them stick together, how many boundaries, how many uh, bonds do you have? Three. So should it be more? Yeah. Should it be three times more? We don't know. So what we can do is see how much it is per nucleon and then maybe make a graph of it. So again, we'll get uh, we'll get the value that it was 1.095. Uh, why did I not give you the neutron one? Let me just add that back in so I don't forget. Mass of neutron. Okay. So if you were to draw a graph. Now before you draw this, let me explain what's happening. On the bottom is the mass number, or the, I think you call it the atomic number sometimes in chemistry, don't you? Mass number anyway. The number of protons and neutrons. Uh, that's the mass number. Can I go on? Yes. Right. So anyway. Um, at the very beginning, when you have zero protons and neutrons, 
then there is no binding energy. Okay, and when you have one proton, is there any binding energy? Yes. Come in there. When you have one proton, is there any binding energy? No. When you have a proton and a neutron, yes. there is. Now, what is happening as you move across the right, you're having more protons and neutrons. And the graph is the binding energy per nucleon. So what happens in the graph? As you get more protons and neutrons, you actually need more energy per nucleon, nucleon to bind them together. But then there reaches a point and then the energy per binding decreases. And that point there is actually at iron. So when you look, when you ask what requires the most binding energy per proton and neutron, it's iron. So when you, the protons and neutrons bound together in iron are the ones that are most difficult to separate. You can see iron is right on the top. And then it decreases. Um, so the iron group, these are very tightly bound together. What things are not uh, tightly bound together? What would be at the start of this chart? Hydrogen and then helium and then lithium. So these are the easier ones to separate. If you fire something at them, it's easier to separate them. And what's the most difficult one to separate? It would be iron. So it's very difficult to separate iron. Um, the binding energy is the strongest. So you can see the unit is mega electron volts. So for iron, it's about nearly 10 mega electron volts per nucleon binding. Whereas for something like um, helium, it's what do we get? Two, what is this? A one. This one is power two. Which for the, for the iron? For which? The iron. What's power 10 exactly? Uh, electron. Uh, mega electron volts, yeah? What are you asking me? Like, so then mega 10 to the 6. Yeah. yeah. Did we use mega electron volts for our answer? Yes. Yeah. No, we have TQ. Yeah, we had mega. We had mega. What was our mega answer? Huh? Yes, and then we have to divide it by 4, wasn't it? We didn't do it for that one. Like here. It was 27.3, and then by 27.3 divided by 4 is 6.825. Seems a bit big, but anyways. Well, you know, it's actually, there's a curious um, spike at the start and then it goes back to normal. So actually I do wonder if this spike is helium. So you see what can you see that? It spikes up at the start, then goes back down and then increases to iron and then decreases. Anyways, what's at the very end? Uranium two three five. Um I don't see, they don't bother to list hydrogen or helium. Oh well. Sometimes, listen, sometimes they ask you to draw this graph in the exam. So you don't have to be as accurate as this. But what they want to see in the exam is they want to see on the x axis mass number, yes, on the y axis binding energy per particle in mega electron volts. And what shape graph do you think they want? Uh, they want this kind of graph that increases to a peak and then kind of flattens out towards the end. And they definitely want you to mark the peak on the graph, and the peak on the graph is right. iron. Okay. So I want you to draw this, and they've asked this twice recently, so you could be asked to draw it in the exam.
Yeah. Mass number is just a number. It's the number of protons plus neutrons. There's no kil kilogram unit in it. Like the mass number of hydrogen one is one. The mass number of an alpha particle is four. Two protons plus two neutrons. Uh, yes, whatever. There's so many synonyms here. <laughs> is that what you use in chemistry? What? Tell me what you use in chemistry. Do you really? Nucleon number. Okay, nucleon number then. You can write that on the x axis. Okay, have you got that taken? Yeah? Okay. Now, it's actually not as big as it looks because a lot of the information down the bottom here are the masses of things. So here is hydrogen 2, uh, helium 3, uranium 235, I think this is barium 139. This is Superman's favorite. Krypton, 94, a neutron, a proton, and, oh, what's this one there, the curie, is it, terenium, what? Copper? Oh, yeah, copper, <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, right, so this is copper, 63. Um, okay, so what I want to do um, is I'm going to let you do these, and then I'll do a tutorial, I'll do the answers on the board, because, let me see, let me just check where we're at. Yeah, great. We have three topics left. So, we have a double class tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there's nothing more on this class is Thursday. Oh, is it? Okay. So, if I do the tutorial now, then that means on the class on Thursday, mm -hmm. then I can do two topics, because I won't have to do any homework. Yes? And then when's the last physics class? Because we have five hours a week. Oh, tomorrow's one period. Ah, okay, so then what will happen is tomorrow I'll do, I won't have to do a homework, I'll do lesson seven, and then on Thursday, if it goes well, we can finish the last two topics on Thursday. If it goes well. We might have to do one of the, the we might have to do the homework the following Monday morning. Yeah. Uh, so this is our plan. So we'll try and get finished in a week from today. And then we can start the revision after that. So what I want you to do for me um, for about 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes should be enough. They're not big calculations. You just have to be careful with your decimal points. 